Well, it's great to see every one of you that have joined us, and I am excited that we are here at God at the Movies. Been looking forward to this for a long, long time. Those of you who have joined us online today, even though maybe you couldn't be here physically, we're so glad that you're a part of this service as well. Uh, I've been looking forward to this for months, literally, because uh, it's, it has become our favorite series of the year, I think. I know this much for those of us who, who teach, our, our teaching pastors, uh, we work harder uh, on these messages than we do anything else that we preach because uh, you have to, I think for the most part, you have to watch the movie four or five times just to figure out a theme that would be, you know, biblical, that, that you'd have plenty of supporting scripture for that, uh, that we could preach. And to be honest with you, even though I watched it that many times, uh, this one didn't, didn't fall out for me. It's a delightful movie. If you've not, how many of you have seen uh, Ferdinand already? Okay, my goodness, not very many of you. I, I will tell you, it's a lot of fun. If you have children especially, uh, you would enjoy it, although I probably shouldn't say that because the, you've noticed this with animated flicks that uh, the humor is not really directed at little kids. It's directed at big kids, you know. And so this one's a lot of fun uh, about this bull that uh, is not normal. Uh, he, uh, he's a whole lot more interested in flowers and playing in the field than he is in uh, uh, going into the arena against the matador. But... Uh, as I went through it, I, I couldn't find that one theme that I felt like I could just do a message on. But what I did come across were several biblical principles that I want to pray over this congregation. And so that's really what I'm going to be doing today is just sharing with you uh, six or seven prayers that I pray for you after watching the movie Ferdinand. So uh, for the first one of those prayers, take a look at the next clip, please. Weird is the new normal. Uh, you, you know what, the first prayer that I pray for you after I watch that film is, I pray this for everyone at CLC, for every one of you and those of you who joined us online as well. I pray that you would discover your unique design. That was the one truth that does come through throughout the movie about Ferdinand. He knew who he was. He wasn't like most bulls, but that didn't seem to bother him. He, he was himself. And it's amazing to me how many, not just little kids, how many big kids are still trying to figure out who they are, how God has wired them, what gifts he's placed inside them. In fact, I read one survey that had been done among, only among born-again Christians here in America, and it was like 85 or 88% of them said that they did not know what their gifts were. They did not know what their purpose on earth is. And to me, that's so sad. It's so sad that you would go through life without knowing that God designed you very specifically for a purpose. Look at Romans chapter 12 with me, if you would, starting at verse 4 from the message translation. He said, in this way, we are like the various parts of a human body. Each part gets its meaning from the body as a whole, not the other way around. The body we're talking about is Christ's body of chosen people. Each of us finds our meaning and function as part of his body. But as a chopped off finger or a cut off toe, we wouldn't amount to much, would we? So since we find ourselves fashioned into all these excellently formed and marvelously functioning parts in Christ's body, I want you to notice this now. Let's just go ahead and be what we were made to be without enviously or pridefully comparing ourselves with each other, or trying to be something we aren't. You've seen that sometimes. Have you seen people that were trying to be something they were never intended to be? You know what I'm talking about? And it's always so sad. It's like everybody else knows it except them, you know? And it's so sad. Ferdinand shows us throughout the film that, that we should be who God created us to be. And that's my prayer for you. I pray that God would help you to discover your design so that you can walk out the purpose and the plan that he had for you before you were even born. And by the way, if you don't know what that purpose is and you have never discovered your gifts, I've really got good news for you because at CLC we try to help with that. We have what we call growth track. It actually uh, starts up again next week. We took today off, but the first four Sundays of every month is our growth track. And in week number two, which would be October the 14th, uh, it's really not a class that day. It's more like a, an interactive lab where you'll take some personality profiles and spiritual gifts tests that will help you. By the end of that class uh, on October the 14th, you will know what your gifts are. 
And once you understand how God has gifted you, that gives you a great insight into what His plan for you is, what His purpose for you is, because He wired you intentionally to fulfill the plan that He designed you for. And so I pray that you would be able to discover your unique design. You know, in, in this film, uh, the bulls were competing against each other because uh, they were to fight each other and uh, the losers were just going to become meat. They were going to go to the chop house and the winner would be able to go against the matador in the arena. So take a look at the next clip, please. It crushes your soul if you stop to think about it. That's why my second prayer for you today is I, I pray that you won't listen to the haters. Yeah. I pray that for the children in the room today and I pray that for the big kids in the room today. And, and let, me, let me just address this to the kids at the beginning. You know, I think they invented a word there when Bone said, you're a sizest. You know, you're, in other words, you're prejudiced against people because of their size. And there are some people I guess we could call ageist because they judge people by their age. And there are other people that we all know as racist because they prejudge people on the basis of their skin color. But all of that is wrong. Because all of that, hear me children, all of that is prejudice. And prejudice, it's real easy to see it in the word itself. Prejudice means to prejudge. And anybody ought to be able to understand that it would be foolish for you to judge someone that you don't even know to judge them before you've had a chance to find out anything about them. And so I say to all of our children, I hope that you will not listen to the haters because you know how it hurts when someone else judges you. You know how it hurts when they speak words against you or when they bully you. And so I pray that no child at CLC would ever be guilty of prejudging others regardless of what it was. And now I want to talk to the big kids in the room because there's really a lot of haters in our world. You didn't need me to tell you that today, but it's so true. Some people are haters and they, they base all of their judgments on your religion, and that's wrong. And there's other folks that base all of their hatred on your political views. I'm 65 years old and I have never seen the amount of animosity and hatred on politics as what I've observed in the last year or two in this country. Okay? And there are other people that, that are haters based on skin color, which seems so crazy when you stop and think about it. But it's hatred. There are other people who are haters on the basis of the, your country of origin. But my plea for all of us today is that CLC would be bigger than that that we would be bigger than to prejudge people on any basis. I pray that this church would be an example to the south suburbs and to the Chicagoland area to let folks know that we're not going to be like that. We're not going to give in to the haters, but we're going to rise above that hatred, above that nonsense, and believe that all men are worth our love and all men are deserving of our grace because every person you meet is a person for whom Jesus died. Every one of them. Amen. I love the, the, the verse of Scripture. I love the message translation of a verse in 1 Samuel chapter 10. This was when Israel had just received their first king. God had appointed a man by the name of Saul to be king over them. And most of the people rejoiced about it. They honored Saul and, and they gave gifts to him. They were so happy to have a king. But there were, the, there were haters even back then. There were haters. The message translation calls them the riffraff. And it said, the riffraff went off muttering, deliverer, because some of the people had said Saul is going to deliver us. The riffraff said, deliverer, don't make me laugh. They held him in contempt and refused to congratulate him. I love the last line. But Saul paid them no mind. He didn't pay any attention to the haters. In fact, one translation said it was as if he was deaf. I think that's a good way to go through life. Let the haters say whatever they're going to say, but you just ignore everyone. Act like you didn't hear a word they said. Because if you think about it, if you dwell on it, it'll crush your soul. The goat was right. It'll crush your soul. But how much better for us to not listen and rise above the haters. Now, one of the, one of the bulls in the story, Guapo, 
uh, has been sent to the chop house and his friend Bones is really hurting about it. So take a look at this next clip. Here's the third prayer that I pray for you. I've talked to you about this recently, but I want to mention it again today. I pray that everyone at CLC would realize that it's okay to not be okay. Yeah. And I say that because some churches, some well-meaning, spirit-filled, Holy Ghost churches have this, this, imp leave this impression that they're perfect. You know? That they've never sinned. That they don't have any struggles. That they don't ever have a disagreement in their home. Hello. You've seen churches like that, haven't you? Yeah. We've sometimes said around here, no perfect people are allowed at CLC. But I looked around the room just now, and you all still qualify. Because yeah. none of us are perfect. We all still have our struggles. We all still have our issues. But it's okay. Now, it's not okay for you just to have your issue and say, that's my issue, and I'm just going to stay this way. You know, I didn't say that. It's okay for you to have issues as long as you're trying to do something about it. And that's what we're here for. We're here to help you with your issues, just like Ferdinand wanted to help Bones with his issues. He, he didn't have to deal with his, uh, his allergies alone. He said, I'm here for you. And that's our position at CLC. We're here for you regardless of you not being okay in however way you're not okay. All right. He had another friend that wasn't okay as well. So take a look at the next clip, please. I think that clip just preached itself. If we don't look out for each other, who will? And what you may think is no big deal for the person that you help, it is for them. That's why I pray for every one of you. I pray that you find someone that you can trust with your secrets. Angus thought he had a secret. <laughs> and you know, a lot of times, it's exactly like that. With the, Angus thought that nobody knew he couldn't see very well when the reality was everybody knew except for him. And he struggled with that. And sometimes we all have issues in our lives that we're struggling with that even other people recognize, but we keep trying to hide it. Hello? I think I'm talking to someone today. I told you a week or so ago, and you've, you've probably heard this in other places as well. It's not original with me, but you're only as sick as your secrets. Because when you keep your struggles hidden, when you keep them in darkness, when you're, you're not willing to share it and open up with someone and get help for it, it actually remains an issue. It actually remains a struggle and you don't get over it. You don't get it. You're as sick as your secrets. That's why I'm praying that everybody here would, would find someone, a godly individual in your life, a friend, a group of friends that you could share without fear of, of their gossip or without fear of their judgment, but you could share with them your struggles. And, and by the way, that's not just me on my soapbox. That's not just something that Jerry wants for you. That's what the Bible says. James chapter 5 and verse 16 makes it very clear. He says, confess your sins to each other. He didn't say there, confess your sins to God. We all know that already. We confess our sins to God in order to be forgiven. That's important. But in this passage, he says, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. It's one thing to get forgiveness from God. It's another thing to be made whole, to be healed, so that that issue is no longer an issue, so that the blindness that you once had has been removed and now you can see, so the struggle you were in is now healed so that you can help somebody else. Amen. But it won't happen as long as you keep things a secret. And that's why I'm, I'm sincerely praying this for everybody in the room that you would be able to find someone that you can trust with your secrets. 
Now, we, we try to help with that at CLC. We really do. And, we, and the way we try to help with that is through our life groups. And I know they're already under session and there's no, no sign-ups in the lobby today, but, but it's not too late. You could still get involved, and I encourage you to do so if you've not already done so. I encourage you to get involved in a life group and meet some other Christians that you could trust. Yes. And over a period of time, it won't happen the first meeting, but over a period of time as you get to know them and they get to know you, you'll find out who in that room that you are comfortable with, who you could trust. To be able to open up your heart and share with them the struggle that's going on. Because the Bible says, you know, you know the rest of this verse. You know what I'm about to read. You've heard it all your life. It says the, the earnest prayer. I learned it in the King James. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man yes, produces great results. In this case it says has great power and produces wonderful results. And that happens in regards to someone sharing a secret and others praying for you, those kind of prayers get wonderful results. That's a promise from God. You meet that person that you can trust and see if it doesn't work out that their prayers together with yours will produce wonderful results in your life. I pray that you'll find someone that you can trust with your secrets. Take a look at the screen, please, for the next clip. Here's my fifth prayer for you today. I pray... I hope you're listening. I pray that you will rescue others too. You know, if you're part of our church family, you already know this. We, we prayed for 21 days leading up to this series. It ended yes, yesterday was day 21. And on day number 20 at our 6 o'clock prayer meeting that Friday morning, I was, I was walking somewhere in this altar area when what you just saw on the screens <clears throat> came to my heart. And I wasn't thinking about the movie. I wasn't, you know, wasn't, I was praying. I was praying over names of people that you submitted, that you love, people that you want to see come to the Lord. And I was praying over those names. But as I was praying, it, it, I just saw that whole scene in my, in my heart, in my spirit. And, I, you know, I've, I've said this for years. I think God will speak to you wherever you give him an opportunity, you know. If, if, you're a, if you're a plumber, I think God probably talks to you in pipes, you know. If you're an electrician, I suppose he would speak to you through wiring. But, but I guess because I've been watching this movie for so much, you know, trying to put this message together, uh, maybe that's why it was. But as I was praying for you, that came to me. And what, what, is, what was so forcibly impressed on me was how unselfish it was of Ferdinand to pass up an opportunity, actually not just once, but two or three times, he passed up the opportunity to escape with his life, to, to get away from the farm so that he wasn't going to be the bull that got killed in the, in the arena or he wasn't going to be sent to the chop house. He had the opportunity to escape and yet he refused it unless he could take others with him. And I couldn't get away from that. I, here I am praying for people that are lost people that you love, and, and as I did, I just, I was so struck with that, and it became my prayer that, that all of us would, would be like Ferdinand because really and truly, if you stop and think about it, so many times as believers, we get content with our own salvation. We get satisfied with what God is doing in us, and I know it's not intentional, but I also know that we all fall into that trap so easily that, that we have people in our life that we love, relatives and friends and co-workers that we love, but we don't stop to think about their salvation. And I, you know, I, I hate to even bring this to your attention because I know so many of us, we say we believe the Bible, and yet the Bible teaches that there really is a heaven and a hell. And that people will spend eternity in one of those two places. And, and if you believe the Bible... You know, whether you say you believe that part of it or not, it's still true. It doesn't change anything. And that means the names of people that you wrote down on those cards and people that you work with and people that you love, maybe people living in your own home that are on their way, unless something changes, they're on their way to a damnation for eternity of being separated from God. And that came to me so forcibly on Friday morning. That, that we not forget those folks, that, that we not just be taken up with our own salvation, but that we also want to rescue others at the same time that we're saving ourselves. I mean that. 
And, and one of the reasons that we had all of those prayers and one of the reasons that we asked you for those cards is because next Sunday, during this series, next Sunday is what, what we used to call Friend Day or Friend Sunday. You know, it's, it, it, it's nothing real, real difficult, nothing complex. We just ask everybody to bring a friend, you know, bring someone with you next week. We've changed the name now, tried to update things. You know, one of our pastors said, let's call it Show Up Sunday. Let's get everybody at CLC to show up. Even people that only come once a month, let's get everybody to show up on, on the first Sunday of October and, and not just show up yourself, but bring someone with you. And we've promoted that. I think we gave out cards while I was in the Philippines so that you could invite others. And you might think that that's just a gimmick, you know, that's just some, some church stunt or something. But I want to tell you, more than anything else, hear my heart today. I believe it's an opportunity for you to make a difference in somebody's life. Yeah. By inviting them. See, we prayed for 21 days, and that really was the bulk of our prayer meetings. If you participate in any of those, or if you were at the prayer meeting on yesterday, we spent the bulk of our time praying over these lists of names, these cards with all these names. How many of you filled out a card over the last few weeks? You, you wrote down the names of four or five people that, that you love, people that you want to see them saved. Yeah, many of us, hundreds of cards around these altars. And we prayed Lots of man hours. I don't know how many different man hours went into each one of those cards of prayer. And I want to tell you, you did all the praying to prepare their hearts. That's why I was praying. I was saying, God, open their hearts, prepare the way. Lead someone across their path, Lord. Let your loving kindness that, that draws us to repentance be on their lives so that they would be open and receptive to our invitation. Well, the hour of truth has come now because next week is the day. I'm encouraging you over these next six days, if you wrote somebody's name on a card, would you go after them this week? Yes. And I don't mean go after them in some hassling kind of a way. I mean s smother them with love and invite them. Tell them that next week is show up Sunday and if you don't show up with a friend, you'll be embarrassed because everybody else will be. Tell them your pastor made you feel guilty. I don't care what excuse you use. Okay. But do something. To, if you wrote down names on a card, would you make it your level best to get every one of them? Bring them here. Invite someone to be a part of next week's service. I promise you the message next week is going to be the most evangelistic of every one of the God at the movies uh, this year. Look at James chapter 5. This is not just me on a rant. This is God's word to us. James chapter 5 says, My dear friends... If you know people who have wandered off from God's truth, is there anybody here that knows someone that's wandered off? Let me see your hand. You know someone that's wandered from God's truth, okay? He says, if you know someone like that, don't write them off. I've done that to some people in the past. I've, I've been guilty of saying, ah, they're, they're not ever going to be interested. I, I love praying. I, I love because some of you, when you wrote names on the cards, you wrote out in the side. One person put an asterisk beside a name, and out in the side they said, atheist. You know, like, like that's going to worry God. He doesn't care if you believe in him or not. He's not insecure. He knows he's God. Yeah. And, and so I prayed especially for, if you wrote atheist on the card, you know that they got prayed for because I prayed especially for them. Yeah. Don't write them off. Look at the next three words of the verse. What's it say? Go after, Go after them. Get them back. Listen to this. And you will have rescued precious lives from destruction. Amen. That's my prayer. My prayer is that you would rescue. Now, you can't win them all by yourself, but you can play a part. You can invite them and the Holy Spirit can draw them. And by the way, this is really why we do an At the Movies series every year. This is not about entertaining the saints. This is about creating an opportunity. You may have friends that, that they may not believe what we believe, but they probably go to the movies. And maybe they'd be interested just to come and see what this is all about if you invite them. And if you're here today, someone invited you, that's, that's probably why. They reached out to you because they love you. and We're glad that you're here. And we would love to introduce you to a God that is exactly who the Bible teaches that he is. I think so many Americans have a wrong picture of God. I think so many Americans have 
seen him as, as mean or seen him as so far removed from their lives that they could never get to know him. But I want to introduce you to a God. The Bible paints this picture for me. I want to introduce you to a God who will love you unconditionally, who will forgive you for anything and everything you've ever done and who will never, ever leave you. I mean, can you imagine? If I told you I've got a friend that will love that loves me unconditionally and, and forgives me for everything I've ever done wrong and will never, ever leave me, but will always be, he'll be with me in the worst times of my life. If I told you I had a friend like that, how many of you would say, boy, can I meet him? I'd like to, I'd like to know somebody like that too. And that's the picture of the God that we serve. I pray that you'll come to know him. One last clip. You, you probably knew already that it was going to come to a showdown in the arena, the bullfight. And so here it is. Take a look. Yeah, when the moment of truth came, Ferdinand refused to fight. And you know, I, I really don't know. I don't have any idea if the producers, the, the Hollywood personnel that put this movie together, I don't know if, if they are believers, if they knew what they were doing or not. But it sure seems remarkable to me that they chose a bull as the hero of this film. Because if you're familiar with the Old Testament, we sometimes think about the, the lamb, you know, the Bible even calls Jesus the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. But if you read the Old Testament carefully, it also tells us that one of the sacrifices that they were commanded to bring was that of a bull. In fact, the Bible said, the, all these verses are in your notes. I'm not going to read them all today. But, but the Bible tells us that when Jesus came, he didn't bring the blood of a bull he brought his own blood. He came with his own blood. In fact, one, one passage of Scripture said, He paid for you with the precious lifeblood of Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. And just as in the film, Ferdinand was poked and prodded by the matador in the arena, Jesus was whipped and beaten by the Roman soldiers. I mean, it's amazing to me that the hero of this, of this uh, animated film is a beautiful type of Jesus. And when it came to the climactic scene there in the arena, he didn't fight the matador. He laid down. He said, I'm not going to be a part of that. And that's exactly what Jesus did. He laid down. They didn't take his life from him at the cross. Jesus gave his life. He laid down his life for you. Yes, he did. And surely... Surely we all are old enough to understand that he would not have gone to such great lengths if there was any other way to make us right with God. That's what he said in the garden. He said, if, if it be possible, if there's any other way, let this cup pass from me. But he was willing to surrender himself because there's nothing that you can do to save yourself. And so he laid down his life in your place as the perfect sacrifice for your sins. And so here's my question. Are you going to go your way this morning and ignore what Jesus did? You know, you can leave here in just a few minutes when we dismiss the service and you can say, oh, that was cute. That was a nice little bull, nice little movie. Or I pray that instead you could hear God's word today through a bull named Ferdinand and realize just how desperately you need Jesus. We sang that this morning. How desperately you need Him and how willing He is to receive you today.